Hello, I'm Glenn Murphy with Burroughs Welcome Science Explorers and today I'm at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill where I'm talking with Dr. Laura Miller. Dr. Miller has a pretty interesting job and one you've probably never even heard of. She's a mathematical biologist. So let's go talk to Dr. Miller and see what she's been up to. Dr. Miller, thank you for joining us. Yes, thanks for coming to University of North Carolina. So first up, what exactly is mathematical biology? It's basically how can you use mathematics to help answer uh, complicated questions in biology. Part of your job involves building virtual jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question would be why? I mean, what can you, we do with a virtual jellyfish? So the nice thing about it is, is that you can change their size, their shape, the way that they move only by ch uh, changing a couple of numbers in a computer. Whereas if you had robots, you'd have to build a new robot for each one of these changes, which would take a lot of time and money. How do you build a virtual jellyfish? So you need equations that describe everything. You need equations for the jellyfish, for the fluid the jellyfish is in, for any um, animals that they're trying to capture. And then you put it on a computer, simulate it, and visualize it. And then you need to compare it to reality. So we take actual jellyfish, like these guys right here, and uh, we shine a laser sheet over them to illuminate some particles to see what the fluid is doing and compare it to the computer. So what have you found so far? Well, one of the neatest results is that jellyfish typically swim about one body length every second unless they get too small and then they really can't get around using jet propulsion or paddling. So either they can't swim or if they're that tiny they have to have a different way of swimming. They have a different form, a different larval form um, that basically swims with something like a corkscrew that uh, plows you can think of as drilling through the water. But what can we do with this information? How can we use it for the betterment of mankind? Well I guess we could just build an actual jellyfish robot and in fact, a team from Virginia Tech have done just that. In 2009, they built a hydrogen-powered robo-jelly, which uses low-energy pulses to push itself through the water. That's all well and good, but it seems like a lot of effort to go to just to watch a robot jellyfish squidge around in an aquarium, right? Well, there's a little more to it than that. The robo-jelly was actually designed for the US Navy as an underwater surveillance vehicle, one that could squidge around oil rigs, naval bases and other high-risk targets looking for hidden submarines and explosives. Mount a camera on it and boom, you've got an underwater spy bot that even James Bond would be proud of. Dr. Miller's work with insects could lead to the next generation of airborne spy bots too. The US Air Force is already building MAVs or micro-aerial vehicles that mimic flies and beetles. With a better understanding of how insects swim through the air, we could build smaller, lighter and more agile flying spy bots ones that could slip unnoticed into enemy hideouts. This brings a whole new meaning to planting a bug. Dr. Miller's work may even end up leaving the planet in the form of robot probes for space exploration. An airborne robot probe could swim through the thick atmosphere of Mars and cover far longer distances than a robot rover on the ground. And how about sending a jellyfish probe to Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons and one where scientists believe life could be lurking beneath the ice-covered oceans. Who knows, maybe it'll make first contact with a European alien. That's the thing about science, you never quite know where a new idea can lead. Join us next time for more Science Explorers, making discoveries in our world and beyond.